Hello and good day again everybody. Welcome again to Hydraulics and for today's video lecture, we would now be discussing about buoyancy. So what is buoyancy in the first place? So buoyancy is the main reason or the only reason why things float on water. So for pretend that we have this boat here, so suppose that this is now a boat, so all objects here on earth are subject to gravity. So if it is subject to gravity, it has a weight or a force that is directed vertically downwards. So ulitin ko lang, meron po yung timbang and yung direction po ng timbang niya is directed vertically downwards. And ayun, it is because of gravity. So the reason why this boat is floating and well, the reason is because of the buoyant force. So buoyant force po yung rason bakit po lumulutang itong um, boat na to. So according to Archimedes in his principle, so, in order for us to get the value for buoyancy, so any body immersed in a fluid is acted upon by an upward force equal to the weight of the displaced fluid and mathematically representing it, BF or buoyant force is equal to gamma V where gamma is the unit weight and V is the displaced volume. Okay, so going back here, so suppose nga na ito po yung boat. So, in order for us to get the weight of the boat, Kunin natin timbang ng boat. Tapos, ayun. So, kunin natin timbang ng boat. So, that is now the weight. Or kapag alam mo yung mass ng boat, edi mass times gravity lang. Basta weight yan. And in order for us to get the buoyant force BF, so ito po kunwari yung buoyant force natin, kunin daw po natin yung timbang ng na-displace na fluid dito. Then, exactly equal po siya sa um, buoyant force na yan. So, suppose that we have this figure here. So, dito po muna tayo sa nasa left na figure or this wood on a glass. So, of course, if this is now the wood, a part of the wood is submerged into water. So, ito pong part na to. Nakalublub po yan sa tubig. So, yan. So, yung part po na yan, nakalublub po yan sa tubig. And of course, once again, since wood is an object here on earth, it has its own weight. So, meron po siyang timbang. Let's say that this is now its weight. So, weight. So, hindi naman po yan lulutang if wala pong force na nag sa kanya pataas. Kasi nga yung weight natin is pababa. And for the buoyant force, according to Archimedes' principle, so dito yan po. Yan po yung force na pataas na yan. And BF, so the buoyant force BF is equal to, so, kung ito man po yung um, nakalublub po sa um, tubig and let's say that the weight of that particular um, block so kunwari po yung um, weight po I mean yung volume I'm sorry so ulitin ko the volume of this block here and let's say that that is now volume kunwari ano po yan kunwari eh 1 cubic meter so napakalaking baso naman to pero example lang naman to so, for example, that the volume of this wood is 1 cubic meter. Our buoyant force is equal to the weight of water that is 1 cubic meter. So, in Tagalog, kung ano po yung timbang ng tubig na 1 cubic meter, ganun din po katlakas yung buoyant force. So, with that, so ang buoyant force po natin, paano po ba natin masolve yung timbang ng tubig given a volume? So, that is by multiplying it by our unit weight. So, gamma volume. So, substituting known values, ang gamma po natin. And for example, that for this example here, this is fresh water. So, if fresh water yan, its unit weight is 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter times the volume of 1 cubic meter. And with that, we would be arriving at an answer of 9.81 kilonewtons. So, yan po ngayon yung buoyant force. So, ulitin ko lang, buoyant force is basically equal to the weight of water with the equivalent volume of the submerged solid. So, ayan, kung, kung itong submerged solid man is 2 cubic meters, so yung ulitin ko lang, yung submerged lang, yung nakalubog lang, yun lang po yung kukuhanan natin ng volume in order for us to get buoyancy. Okay, so, in here, erase ko po muna tong lahat. We also have another figure here that I should um, explain. Okay, so 
alam nyo na pong kumuha po ng buoyant force, no? So, alam nyo na pong kumuha ng buoyant force. And for example, that the weight of the object is greater than the buoyant force, then the tendency of the object is to sink up until the floor bed. Kunwari, ito na po yung floor bed natin. Itong object po na yan, pababa na po ng pababayan, up until umabot po siya dito. And that is, if and only if, weight is greater than the buoyant force. But what if, for example, the weight is equal to the buoyant force? So if weight is equal to the buoyant force, mag-float lang po siya. So lulutang po yan. So ulitin ko lang. That is if weight is exactly equal to buoyant force. So ganyan lang po yan. Naka-equilibrium lang po yan. But is there a case where the buoyant force is greater than the weight? So meron po tayo example dito pero limited lang po siya dito. So for example that this is now the body of water. And let's say that we have an object here. So if the object is here, and of course it would be having its own corresponding weight, but it is also subject to buoyant force since it is underwater. So kapag mas malaki po yung buoyant force kaysa sa weight, what will happen here is that it will move upwards. So tataas po yan ang tataas. So ngayon, pag nandito na po siya sa part na to, and tataas na naman po. As you can see, mababawasan po yung volume submerged. So if the volume submerged is lessened, ibig sabihin bababa din yung buoyant force because once again, buoyant force is equal to gamma times the volume being submerged. So ito na lang po yung volume submerged niya. So palit po ng palit yung buoyant force natin habang tumataas po yung object natin. And at some point, siguro at this particular portion, magiging buoyant force is equal to weight na po yan. So kapag buoyant force is already equal to weight, kasi nga nabawasan na po yung buoyant force natin kasi onti na lang po yung nakalublog na um, object, ganyan na po, mag-stop na po siya dyan. So it will never be the case wherein buoyant force is greater than weight throughout. Kasi kapag throughout po yan, ang mangyayari po dyan, itong bola po na yung lilipad na yan. And wala, mas matas na siya sa tubig. So ulitin ko lang, that is practically impossible. Okay. So we also have another, I mean, other formulas here that we can use in order for our um, solutions to be, well, much more systematic. And ito, shortcuts na po yan. So once again, these are just shortcuts that if you do not know this um, equations, mabubuhay pa rin naman kayo kaso mas matagal po yung magiging solutions nyo. Suppose that you are getting, let's say, um, the depth or the volume of the displaced liquid or let's say yung height po ng displaced solid under the fluid and etc. So ito pong sa una. So this formula here is for homogeneous solid body of volume B floating in a homogeneous fluid at rest. So suppose that we have a body of water here. Then kunwari meron po tayong volume ng solid dito na medyo irregular for example. So guys, this is just the side view. So kunwari 3D po yan. No? So 3D na nga lang natin. So for example, that this is now a 3D object. So ayan siya. So kunwari ganyan po yan. And yung tubig is this one here. So ito po yung tubig natin na nag-displace. So ibig ko pong sabihin dyan is Itong part na to, yung nakalublob. Okay, so let's say that this is, I mean, this object has a total volume B. So when we say total volume B, lahat po yan. And we also have the volume being submerged underwater VD. Okay, so for VD, according to this one here, so we can actually solve for VD by ratio and proportion. And... By that, just multiply the specific gravity of the body times the volume divided by the specific gravity of liquid. Or just multiply the ratio of the specific gravities of body of, I mean of body to the liquid and multiply it by the total volume. So ratio in proportion. And with that, guys, no? So VD is equal to unit weight of body 
divided by the unit weight of fluid times the total volume. So, shortcut lang po to ulitin ko lang. And this is also equal to the specific gravity of body divided by the specific gravity of fluid times the total volume. So, that is VD. And it, I mean, this can only be used if this object here is homogeneous. So, when we say homogeneous, ibig sabihin po, yung material niya is same throughout. So, when we say that, for example, that this is gold, dapat gold lang po yan. So, let's say that this is brass. So, dapat brass lang po yan. Hindi po pwedeng gold yan. Tapos may nakapatong na brass dito. Tapos may nakapatong na silver. Yun, hindi po natin magagawa itong formula na to. Okay, so another thing. So, for example, if the body of height H has a constant cross-sectional area. So, ayun, example po natin dito is blocks and vertical cylinders. Pwede din po natin ma-solve yung HD. So, maliit po ito. VDN. This should be HD. So, ano po yung HD na yan? So, suppose that we have a cylindrical block here. So, let's say that its total height <coughs> is H. Sorry. So, yung total height po niyan is H. And we also have a height that is underneath this um, body of water. So, this is now HD. Okay, so in order for us to get HD, so similar to this formula here, but this time we would be multiplying it by height and not V. So HD is equal to the specific gravity of the body <coughs> divided by the specific gravity of the fluid times H or unit weight of body divided by unit weight of fluid times H. So that is for HD. So shortcut lang po itong mga to. But take note guys that you can only make use of this equation if and only if according to this <clears throat> um, situation here, dapat daw constant daw yung horizontal cross-sectional area. So what we mean here is that in this case, kung ano po yung area niya dito sa part na to, dapat same din sa area dito. Tapos dapat same din po sa area na yan. Then, same din sa area na yan. Dapat same throughout. Hindi po pwede yung mga pyramid or let's say frustum or cone. Kunwari ganyan, hindi po pwede yung gamitin itong um, solution na to for this particular um, object. So, bawal pong magamit yun dyan. And hindi din po pwede magamit dito kasi magkakaiba po sila ng cross-sectional area. So, ayun. And pwede din po naman, no guys, if you want to get the area of the submerged AS, so, pwede po itong magamit if and only if. So, ito, itong formula na to You can make use of this. If and only if um, it has a uniform vertical cross-sectional area. So, I'm sorry, no? Medyo ano yung throat ko ngayon? Medyo hindi maganda yung pakikisama niya. So, anyway. So, for example, guys, that we have, let's say, uh, cylindrical section. Kung ano cylindrical section natin. But it is now laying down. Kunwari, ito po yung cylindrical section natin. And let's say now that the body of water is this one here. So, ito po yung body of water. Then, ayan. Kapangit ito na drawing ko. So, ganyan po kum kumbaga. So, ibig sabihin po, ito pong part na yan is nakalubog. So, you can get this particular um, area here. So, itong red po na yan. Kung, eh, kung saan po eksakto kung saan po eksakto yung um, surface ng fluid by getting the area here. So, AS. And ang sabi po dito, dapat daw po yung vertical cross-section niya is constant. So, ibig sabihin po, kung ano po yung area dito, dapat yun din po yung area dito, dapat yun din po yung area dito, basta vertical cross-sectional area. Okay, so we was, must have, sorry, pabulul-bulul ulit, so, we will be having some sample problems in order for you to understand the concept better. So, wait. Okay, so for our first sample problem, a block of wood 0 0.2 meters thick is floating in seawater. The specific gravity of wood is 0 0.65, while that of seawater is 1.03. Find the minimum area of a block which will support a man weighing 80 kilograms. So, we have a spoiler here and our answer here is 1.05 square meters. So, ang sabi po dito, we have a block of wood. So, for that particular block of wood, ito na po siya, for example. 
So let's say that this now the block of wood. So side view lang po ito. And we have a man weighing 80 kilograms um, stepping here. So ibig sabihin meron daw po tayong of course tao dito. And its mass is now equal to 80 kilograms. And of course we have a body of water. So ito po yung body of water natin ngayon. So if we would be asking, or if you would now be asking me, saan po yung level of water? Would it be here? Would it be here? Or would it be here? So it should be here at the topmost. Kasi ang tinatanong po dito, find the minimum area of a block which will support a man weighing 80 kg. So minimum area. So kapag minimum area po, dapat nakasagad-sagad na din po yan dito. So kasi kapag ganito, hindi po yung minimum yung hinahanap natin. Kasi dapat yung kapag minimum po yung hinahanap, dapat sagad-sagad po. So parang critical na po. Kumbaga nandito na po dapat yan sa pinakadulo. Okay, so there. And ang tinatanong po dito, minimum area. And once again, this is just the side view. So yung actual po niya na itsura is may ganito po siya. So malamang three-dimensional object po yan. So yan. So that is now how it would look like. So, ganun, and meron din po malamang doon na body of water at that particular side. So, ito po. So, in order for us to um, solve for the buoyant force, you must, of course, get this particular volume. And aside from this 80 kilogram force here, as exerted by the person, meron din daw timbang yung wood. So, we also have the weight of the wood. So, ito. So, weight of the wood. So, that is equal to... So, meron po tayong specific gravity dito, which is 0 0.65. So, 0 0.65. So, multiply it by the unit weight of water. So, ngayon, you can either use 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter or better yet, pwede namang 9810 na lang. 9810. But this time, this must be in terms of newtons per cubic meter. So, bakit 9810 yung gagamitin ko? So, yan yung gagamitin ko in order for us to have a unit in terms of newtons. Kasi ito, itong 80 kilograms na to, kapag minultiply ko po to ng acceleration due to gravity, ang kalalabasan po nito is in terms of newtons. So, 80 times 9.81. So, this is now equal to 784.8 newtons. So, pwede nyo, nyo din naman tong i-convert into kilonewtons. So, kahit ano pong gusto nyo, kayo na po bahala. Okay, so once again, for the weight of wood, this is just the unit weight of wood. So in order for us to get the weight of the wood, we must multiply this by the volume of wood. So for the volume, so it is given in the problem that it is 0 0.2 meters thick. So ito po. So this is now 0 0.2. So in order for us to get this total volume, we must multiply the thickness by the area. So with that, this now 0 0.2 times the area. So with that, the weight of wood. This now equal to, looking at the calculator to your left. So 0 0.65 times 9810 times 0 0.2. So this now equal to 1275.3 newtons times A. So, yan po ngayon yung weight ng wood natin. Okay, so aside from this value, so aside from the weight of the person and weight of the wood, we also have, of course, the buoyant force acting here. So, malamang pataas po yan. Tinutulak po niya yung wood pataas. So, for the buoyant force, this is now equal to, um, what do you call this? So, the unit weight of the fluid so, ang unit weight po ng fluid natin, so we would be multiplying 1.03 by the unit weight of water because this fluid is salt water or sea water. And ang sabi po niya dito, specific gravity daw ng sea water is 1.03. So, 1.03 times the unit weight of water of 9.81 kilonewtons or let's say 9810 na lang pala para newtons yung kalalabasan. So, 9810 times, of course, volume. So, volume is, once again, 0 0.2 times the cross-sectional area or 
the area of the block. Okay, so with that, buoyant force is now equal to, so looking at the calculator, so 1.03 times 9810 times 0.2. So our answer here is now equal to 2020.86 times A. Okay, so eh, ano ngayon? Okay, so in order for this block to float, the summation of forces vertical is, I mean, must be equal to zero. So kapag ganun, dapat po equal po in under equilibrium to. So ibig sabihin, dapat yung buoyant force po natin equal po siya dito sa dalawang to. Okay, so with that, upwards positive po tayo. And with that, BF minus, so yun lang naman po yung pataas natin, which is buoyant force, lot na po is pababa na. So minus the weight of the person. So weight of the person minus the weight of food. So this is now equal to zero. So simplifying this, so BF is now equal to, so BF is now equal to weight of person plus the weight of food. So, substituting known values, so for our buoyant force, that is 2020.86 times A, of course. And this now equal to what is the weight of the person. Nalimutan ko na. Weight of person is equal to 784.8. Plus, what is the weight of food? So, the weight of food is equal to 127.3A. I mean, 127. 5.3 A. Okay, so we have A as our unknown. So, ayun, shift solve na lang po natin, no? So, with that, so, 2020.86 times alpha x. Oops, ayaw. Alpha x. This is now equal to 784.8 plus 1275.3 times alpha A. I mean, alpha x na lang para recta na tayo mag-shift solve. So with that, our answer here is now equal to 1.05 square meters. So tama ba siya sa answer key natin? So 1.05 square meters. So that is our answer for the first problem. Okay, so next problem po tayo. An iceberg having a specific gravity of 0.92 is floating on salt water of specific gravity 1.03. If the volume of ice above the water surface is 1,000 cubic meters, what is the total volume of the ice? So I will be showing you two approaches. So yung pinakauna po is the most obvious approach. Then the second one is the faster approach. Okay, so let us draw the figure first. So for Example that this is now the surface of water. Kunwari, ito po yung surface natin ng water. And meron daw po tayong iceberg. So, di ko po alam pa paano mag-drawing ng iceberg. Kunwari, ito na lang yung iceberg natin. Yan. Okay, so ang sabi po dyan, that for the iceberg, it has a specific gravity of 0.92. And yung specific gravity daw ng tubig alat natin is 1.03. So this is, I mean, this has a specific gravity of 1.03. It is said here that the volume of ice above the water surface is 1,000 cubic meters. So ibig sabihin that this volume, so V, let's say that this is now V1 na lang. V1, so this is now equal to 1,000 cubic meters. Okay, so what is the total volume of ice? So yung V natin na total. Yun yung po yung hinahanap. Okay. So for the weight, so V, total na to. So for the weight of the iceberg, so let's say W ice na lang yan. That is equal to, so the unit weight times the total volume. So yung unit weight po natin, that is equal to, so specific gravity times unit weight of water times the total volume V. And this is now equal to, so, 0 0.92 times 9.81 times V. Hindi nga po natin alam yung V. So, with that, the weight of the ice is now equal to, so looking at the calculator, so 0.92 times 
So this is now equal to 9.0252V. Okay, so yan po yung weight ng ice. And of course, since this is submerged underwater, a part of it, so meron din po tayong um, upward force dito, which is the buoyant force. So for the buoyant force, that is equal to the weight of the fluid here. Or let's say that since this volume here is submerged, kung ano man po yung uh, volume niyan, kunin po natin yung timbang ng fluid na ganun yung katumbas niya. Okay, so with that, buoyant force is now equal to the unit weight of the fluid, which is specific gravity of fluid times the unit weight of water times this volume. So ano po ba tong volume na to? So if the total volume is, well, this total volume, and meron po tayong um, V1 na nakausli dyan sa taas na hindi tumutulong sa buoyant force, we can now say that the volume submerged V2 is equal to the total volume minus 1,000. So with that, this is now equal to V minus 1,000 cubic meters. So with that, BF is now equal to what is the specific gravity that is 1.03 times the unit weight of water of 9.81 times V minus 1,000 cubic meters. Okay, so ayan. And since this is the buoyant force and this is the weight of the ice, so getting the summation of forces vertical equal to zero, whereas upwards is to be positive. So, um, ano nang gagawin natin? Um, ayun. Ano ba yung pataas? That is BF. So, BF minus the weight of the ice is equal to zero. So, substituting known values. So, we have 1.03 times 9.81. Teka, i-color coding nga natin para naman maayos yung solution natin. So, 1.03 times 9.81 times V, yung V po natin is this V, minus 1,000. So, ito po, pang buoyant force pa lang po to, Minus the weight of the ice of 9.0252. Times V is equal to 0. So, shift solve na lang po natin yan using our calculator here. So, 1.03 times 9.81 times, oops, sorry. Alpha x minus 1,000. So close parenthesis. Minus 9.0252. Alpha x is equal to 0. So shift solve. So solving for that, we would be arriving at a volume of 9363.6364. Um cubic meter. So this is now the first approach. Okay, so what about for the second approach? So dapat ito pa rin po yung answer na masasolve natin, no? Pero check po natin kung meron po tayong mas mabilis na approach. So the faster approach is by making use of this formula. So ito po, yung ratio and proportion. So whereas the volume that is underneath the surface is equal to the specific gravity of body divided by the specific gravity of liquid times the total volume. So total volume po yung hinahanap natin. No? So going back here. So na yun? So going back here. So ulitin ko lang, the volume underneath the water surface or the surface of water is equal to um, the specific gravity of the body divided by the specific gravity of, um, let's say, the fluid times the total volume. So, yung total volume po yung hinahanap natin. So, what is VD in terms of total volume? So, if this is now the figure, so if yung total V natin is itong buo, then ito nga po yung V1 natin na meron nakalawit sa taas, we can now say that the volume underneath is V minus 1,000. So with that, um, this is now equal to V minus 1,000. So that is 
the volume submerged. So this equal to what is the unit, I mean the specific gravity of the ice, so that is 0 0.92 divided by 1.03. So tama ba yun? So yes, 1.03 times the volume V. So ayun, same old, so shift solve na yan. So looking at the calculator to your, our left, your left pala, so x minus 1000 is equal to 0 0.92 divided by 1.03 times alpha x. So shift solve ko na po yan and we must arrive at the same answer of 9363.6364 cubic meters. So ito po yung shortcut po natin. So that is 4 hour, ano po to, second ba to? 4 hour second problem solving. So there. Okay, so next problem po tayo. A body having a specific gravity of 0 0.7 floats on a liquid of specific gravity 0 0.8. So the volume on the body above the liquid surface is what percent its total volume. Okay, so ito po, let's suppose that we have a body of fluid here. And let's say, oops, sorry. And let's say that we have a certain object, whatever this object is. Manuara, yan po yung object natin. Okay, so for this object, so itong body daw na to has a specific gravity of 0 0.7. And it floats on a liquid with specific gravity equal to 0 0.8. So baka oil yan. Okay, so ano daw yung percentage ng volume dito as compared with, of course, the whole one. Okay, so, itong nasa baba kasi, di ba may shortcut nga tayong ginamit natin kanina. So, in order for us to get this V, say VD, ito po yan. So, VD is equal to the specific gravity of the body divided by the specific gravity of the fluid times the total volume or yung kalahatan yan. And solving for VD or yung yan yung nakalubog, VD is equal to, so substituting known values, that is 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.8 times the total volume. And giving this, I mean giving us an answer of, so looking at the calculator to your left, but ayaw ng calculator ko, ayun. 0.7 divided by 0.8, so that is equal to 0 0.875. So 0 0.875V. So what this implies is that for VD, it accounts 87.5% of V. So implication nito, 87.5% ng total volume yung nandun sa ilalim. So if 100% po yung buo, so ang ibig sabihin po niyan, for the volume above, so above, so this equal to, so if 100% po yung total volume nung lahat, malamang 100%, isusubtract po natin kung ilang percentage yung nandun sa baba. Leaving as an answer of, so I think this is 12.5%. So para sure, para walang trust issues, so 100 minus 87.5. So, ayan, 12.5% po yung nakalawit. So, ang answer po natin dyan is 12.5%. Okay, so moving forward. So, dito naman, a stone weighs 460 newtons in air. So, when submerged in water, it weighs 300 newtons. So, find the volume and the specific gravity of the stone. So, let's say that we have a body of water here. And, of course, we have a stone. So, kapag nandito daw yung stone, yung weight daw niya is equal to 460 newtons. So, when submerged in water, so kapag nandito naman na po siya sa baba, yung weight naman na po niya na naririn is equal to 300 newtons. So, find the volume and the specific gravity of the stone. So, yung volume po muna. So, madali lang po ito, no? So once again, for this particular one, so meron to po tayong weight dyan, malamang. And we also have the buoyant force. So weight, then 
the buoyant force. Okay, so for the buoyant force, so as you can see here, kung dati, 460 newtons siya, nung linoblob sa tubig, naging 300 newtons. So, ibig sabihin yun, yung difference nila, that is the buoyant force. Yun, so, yun po, kung ano po yung nabawas dito, dati siyang 460, tas naging 300 siya. So, yung rason naman kung bakit nabawasan yan na naging 300 is malamang buoyant force. And with that, so, the buoyant force is equal to 160. So, 460 newtons minus 300 newtons. So, ang buoyant force po natin dyan is 160 newtons. So, that is now our buoyant force. And once again, if that is our buoyant force, and buoyant force is equal to um, the unit weight. May unit weight po bang binigay dito? So, wala naman po. So, buoyant force is equal to the volume of the object times the unit weight of water. So, with that, so equating both of this, so 160 newtons is equal to the volume times the unit weight of water. And since this is in terms of newtons, dapat in newtons din po natin yung unit weight ng water. So, newtons per cubic meter. So, with that, the volume now is equal to, so, 160 divided by 9810. So, our answer here is 0 0.016, sorry, 163 cubic meters. So, yun po ba yung nasa answer key natin? So, that is indeed accurate. So, 0 0.0163 newtons. Okay, so what about for the specific gravity of this particular, um, to call this, so for this particular stone. So its total weight is 460 newtons. So for unit weight, oh, unit weight is equal to weight divided by volume. So with that, the weight is once again, um, ano na yun? 460 newtons in air. So 460 newtons divided by its volume of 0 0.0163. So get, getting an, our answer here, so 460 divided by answer. So that is now equal to 28203.75 newtons per cubic meter. So ito na po ba yung sagot natin? Hindi pa. Ang tinatanong po yung specific gravity. And for specific gravity, that is equal to the unit weight of the object divided by the unit weight of water. So with that, 28203.75 newtons per cubic meter divided by 9810 newtons per cubic meter. So magiging unitless po yan. So just divide this by 9810. So ang specific gravity po ng stone is 2.875 na unitless. So ayan po. Four number, ano number ba to? Four number four. So there. Okay, so next sample problem. A uniform block of steel with specific gravity 7.85 floats at a mercury water interface. So what is the ratio of the depths of the steel block in water and mercury? So wala naman pong sinabi sa problem kung alin yung nasa taas pati nasa baba. But take note guys, that for water, yung specific gravity nito is 1.0 and the specific gravity of mercury so, matik naman po yan if hindi given sa problem that this is in terms of 13.6 or 13.56 actually yung mas, ano, mas accurate. So, 13.56 na po yung gamitin natin but if you would be using 13.6, okay lang pero hindi lang siguro may isasakto yung answer nyo dun sa choices pero malapit siya. Okay, so this time we would be making use of 13.56 and... Ayun, ano pa ba yung mga kailangan natin dito? So anyway, so paano ko po ba nalaman na nasa baba yung mercury and nasa taas yung water? So I knew that because, of course, mercury is heavier than that of water. Kaya nasa baba po palagi yung mas mabigat. Okay, so in this figure, of course, this uniform block of steel has its own weight. So meron po yung timbang malamang. So yung timbang niya, let's say that this is now its weight. So for its weight, that is now equal to um, the unit weight 
of steel, which is, well, actually, sabi niya po dito, 7.85 daw po yung specific gravity. So, just multiply the specific gravity by the unit weight of water of 9.81. And, of course, multiply it by the total volume. Okay, so in here, mag-assign lang po ako dito ng um, dimension. So, for example, na ito po, itong dimension na yan, let's say, is dimension A. And at the lower part, let's say that this is now, oops, sorry, dimension B. So, let's say that this is now dimension B. Okay, so with that, um, ito po, A, sorry, A plus B. So, ito po yung height and volume po yung kailangan natin i-multiply dito in order for us to get the weight. And since this is a uniform block of steel, so let us assign an arbitrary um, variable A. So, ito po, A. So, ayun, lagi ko nandito. Let A be equal to the area. Then, let small letter A be the depth of water. And B be equal to the depth of mercury. Okay, so proceeding. So, ito may weight na po yan dyan. And of course, since it is submerged in water, meron din po tayong buoyant force ng water na pataas naman. So, lagi ko na lang dito, pataas siya dito. And so, buoyant force of water, that is now equal to, so, since ang specific gravity niya is just 1, so, multiply the unit weight of water, 9.81, times the volume of this one here. And since meron po tayong um, chosen area A, so A pa rin naman po yung area dyan. And just multiply this by our um, assigned um, small letter A or depth A. So ayan. So that is now our buoyant force for water. And since this is also submerged in mercury, so meron din po dapat tayong um, buoyant force ni mercury. So let's say that this is now buoyant force water. And this now for buoyant force mercury. So this is now equal to. So just multiply the specific gravity. So SG of 13.56 times um, the unit weight of water. Sorry, nangawit na yung batok. So times 9.81 times this particular volume. And yung volume na yan is B times area. So B times, of course, area. Yan. Okay, so now let us now get the summation of forces vertical equal to zero. So upwards positive na lang. So with that, BF ng mercury plus buoyant force ng water. So minus the weight of the steel block. So this is now equal to zero. So substituting known values. So, ang buoyant force po ng mercury, that is 13.56 times 9.81 times B times area plus ano po yung buoyant force ng water. So, that is now 9.81 times A times area minus what is now the weight of the steel block. So, that is 7.85 times 9.81 times um, A plus B. Asan na yun? So, A plus B times, of course, A. So, this is now equal to 0. Okay, so, papano naman na po ito ngayon? And since we have A in all of them, we can actually divide them all by A. Para lang mawala yung A. So, A would now cancel out. Leaving us an, at an equation of. Sige, simplify ko na lang po ito. So, looking at the calculator to your left. So, 13.56. Sorry. Times 9.81. So, that is now equal to um, 133.0236 B plus 
a minus so 7.85 times 9.81. So, ito simplify ko na po agad. Minus 77.0085a minus 77.0085b. So, that is now equal to 0. So, collecting similar terms. So, yung mga blue pati yung mga red. So, yung mga red po muna. O yung mga blue na lang muna kasi A din lang yan. So, 9. Sorry. 9.81 minus answer. So, that is now equal to negative 67.1985A. Then, plus. So, what is now the red ones? So, negative. Oops, sorry. Negative 77.0085. Plus 133.0236. So plus 56.0151. Um, so this is now equal to 0. Oh, sorry, B. So that is now equal to 0. Okay, so ngayon, ang gawin po natin is for us to get the ratio of A over B. So, ang tinatanong po kasi dito, ano daw po yung ratio? So, what is the ratio of the depths? So, ngayon, ang kunin po natin is A over B. Okay, so in order for us to do that, ayun, ano, paano ba natin gagawin yan? So, A over B, para po magawa natin yan, edi eh isolve natin. Wala na ibang masabi. So, ayun guys, so, what? Ito yung gusto ko maging outcome. So, let's say um, 56 or let's say 67.1985A is equal to 56.0151B. So, ang ginawa ko, ito, transpose ko sa kabila, pero nausi lang ako, pinagbaliktad ko ulit. So, magiging ganito po yung kalalabasan niya. Okay, so... Um, in here, I would now be dividing both of this by 67.1985. So, ito din. One, I mean, 67.1985. 1985. Tapos, divide ko din both sides by B. So, parang cross-multiplication kumbaga. But this time, this would cancel out. And this would now cancel out. So, mangyayari po dyan, magiging... A over B na lang to. So, A over B is now equal to. So, looking at the calculator. So, 56.0151 divided by 67.1985. So, our answer here is now equal to 0 0.833. So, sorry. 0 0.8336. Ito po yung ratio natin. So, our... Um, spoiler here is 0 0.834. So, pares din lang naman. Isumot lang nga the same. Yun lang. Okay, so anyway, so that is how we would be solving for this kinds of problem. So, let us now proceed to the next problem solving part and the next topic itself.